Today we're going to learn a couple of things about two-stage heat pump systems. One, we're going to learn the control wiring, how to wire these things up at the air handler and thermostat. We're also going to cover a little bit of the sequence, so we're going to go through step by step how these different terminals get powered up and activated. And we're also going to learn a little something about starting these systems up when they're brand new. Um, brand new two-stage heat pump systems, they have to be running in second stage in order to properly balance the refrigerant charge in the system. So obviously knowing how and when second stage is activated is a pretty important that process. So what I like to do with these videos, I always start with the power source. And that will be at the R terminal on the control board in our air handler or our indoor unit. Now off of this R terminal, you're gonna have a wire that runs up to the RC terminal on your thermostat. Now the whole point of this wire is to get power up to the thermostat because each of the terminals on the thermostat, when they're energized, turn on different components in the system. So the thermostat needs to receive power in order to send it back out to turn these things on. And that's what this wire does. Now keep in mind as we go through this, the color of the electricity you see flowing on the wire in the schematic is going to be the color of the wire we typically use to make these connections. So in this example, we have a red wire coming off that R terminal on the air handler, going to RC terminal on our thermostat. Now, in addition to this wire coming off the R terminal on the control board in the indoor unit, we're going to have a second wire coming off of that same terminal that is going to go to the R terminal on a defrost control board on the outdoor unit. And the whole purpose of this wire is to power the defrost control board itself. It's an electronic device, obviously it needs power to function. So what I'm going to cover now are the terminals that a heat pump thermostat activates in both heating and cooling modes. These terminals get powered either way. What actually determines heating or cooling in a heat pump system is that OB terminal there. But what I'm about to go through gets powered in either mode. Now the first thing the thermostat is going to do is going to take power from that RC terminal and it's going to power the G terminal. And you're going to have a green wire from the G terminal on your thermostat going up to the G terminal on the control board in the air handler. Now the whole purpose of this wire is to activate the blower motor. The second terminal that's going to get powered is the Y1 terminal. Now before I get into this, I want to clear up a slight misconception a lot of people have about Y terminals and that is most people think the Y terminal is for cooling mode. Um, technically that's not true. It's better to think of the Y terminal as the terminal that turns the outdoor unit on and off. Now the reason why a lot of people think it's for cooling is because in a straight air conditioning system, that is the only time you're turning on the outdoor unit is in cooling mode. But on a heat pump system, the outdoor unit is running in both heating and cooling. So it is not specific just for cooling. Its purpose is to actually just turn on the outdoor unit. Now on multi-stage systems like we're going over today, the Y1 terminal also serves another purpose. So you're going to have power coming off of that Y1 terminal on the thermostat, usually on a yellow wire that goes up to the Y1 terminal on the control board in the air handler. And when the control board receives this Y1 signal, it is often going to indicate at what speed the blower should run in first stage. Now this might be a little different than the speed the blower would run on a signal that's received on that G terminal that we covered earlier. So for example, if you had a thermostat and you took the fan position from auto to on and you ran the blower to circulate air throughout the house without heating or cooling mode being activated, that blower is going to run at a much slower idle speed compared to first stage cooling or heating. Now once our Y1 signal hits that terminal on the control board in the air handler, you're going to have another yellow wire coming off of that same terminal and that is going to go out to the defrost control board on the condensing unit outside. Now this signal is going to go through a couple of pressure switches, high and low pressure, to prevent the compressor from powering up if we have abnormally high or low pressures in our refrigerant in the system. So it protects the compressor um, and eventually when it makes it through those two switches, it hits the contactor, the contactor pulls in, the outdoor unit can now be powered and our compressor and, and condenser fan motor turn on. So what we're looking at here is first stage of a heat pump system. 
Now, second stage, the thermostat has three methods by which it will activate that second stage. One is a simple temperature differential. So if the set point on the thermostat and the actual temperature in the house is more than one degree, it'll activate that second stage, where if it's less than one degree, it will maintain first stage. Other thermostats actually use a timer. Um, so if the temperature of the room is not changing after a certain time period, the thermostat will then activate second stage to give it that extra boost. Now some thermostats, and this is particularly uh, true with smart thermostats, is that they'll do a combination of both. So basically what a smart thermostat will do is it will record the temperature every minute and begin plotting these temperatures on a graph. And if the temperature stays within that one degree differential, it will continue to maintain first stage. Now if that temperature starts to drop out of that one degree differential, it will start plotting that and looking for a pattern. As the temperature continues to drop outside of that one degree differential, the more it does that, the sooner the thermostat will start kicking in second stage. And eventually, if we have enough plots within a certain amount of time that the one degree differential is being exceeded, the second stage will kick in much sooner. So this is kind of like a moving target. Some days it'll kick in second stage immediately, like if it's really cold or really hot, while on other days that are more mild, it might maintain first stage for longer periods. Either way, when the thermostat activates second stage, it is going to activate the Y2 terminal. Now this 24 volts is going to leave the Y2 terminal on the thermostat, usually on a blue wire. It's going to go to the Y2 terminal on the control board in the air handler. And very similar to the Y1 terminal, this is going to initiate a different speed on the blower motor. So when the control board receives this signal on the Y2 terminal, it is going to kick the blower up into a higher speed or second stage. You will then have another blue wire coming right off that same Y2 terminal, and it'll go out to a Y2 on the defrost control board in the condensing unit outside. Now, some units have two compressors, one for each stage. Some units have a single compressor that's staged by itself. So this Y2 signal is going to either initiate a second compressor or initiate a second stage in a single compressor. Um, if you have a variable speed condenser fan motor, this will also initiate a higher speed on that motor. So what you're looking at right now is the powered up configuration of both heating and cooling mode. They're one and the same thing. Like I said earlier, the only difference between one mode and the other is whether or not that OB terminal is actually powered or not. I do have a video that goes into more detail about that. I will link it in the description below. I also have a video that goes into much more detail and how a defrost cycle works on these heat pump systems and I will also link to that below. And that's all I have to say about that.